Have you ever been browsing the internet and accidentally come across something that certain authorities would consider to be illegal? Of course, because we all have. That is the very nature of the internet itself. There literally is no filter which stops you from seeing anything that is illegal. Now, yes, you can choose to not go to sites that blatantly do post illegal content, but the, the same cannot be said for social media. You largely can't control what it is that you see there. Sure, there's an algorithm, but if anything illegal matches that algorithm, it's going to be shown to you. And that's something that you can't control. That's something that you literally have no power to stop. You can control some of the subjects, but there is no perfect filter on there that stops any illegal content from coming into your, into your view. Now, should you be arrested for involuntarily seeing something that certain authorities consider to be illegal? Now, most people would say no, but Israel says yes. This is called passive social media consumption, meaning you didn't ask to see it, but it still appears on your screen and you consume it. Now, this is very common. It happens constantly in all social media. You literally don't pick and choose all of what you see. Israel has decided to criminalize the involuntary viewing of media and, of course, are using it to persecute Arabs in the country. This Arab-Israeli citizen is being arrested because she merely saw a post which the Israeli police allege is terrorist content. She didn't actually do anything. The police officer in this video is telling her that she has been accused of aiding and abetting terrorists and accusing her of conspiring to commit acts of violence and terrorism and accuses her of being a member of a terrorist organization, according to a translation provided by a user on Reddit. So exactly how is it legal to just arrest an Israeli citizen like this? Well, the Gisnet on October 8 actually made changes to the counterterrorism law that increased and created punishments for consumption of terrorist publications. Meaning, if you just see something that they consider terrorist or affiliated with terrorists in some way, you can receive up to a year in prison. The dystopic nature of this is palpable. One does not even need to actually watch the video. For Twitter, you only need to scroll past it for it to count as a view. Since you don't control what you see in the feed, it's literally involuntary. You can be arrested, charged, and sentenced to a year in prison for something not only did you not choose to do, but very likely you didn't even know you had done. This is particularly interesting considering in most countries, the social media site is responsible for taking down illegal content. If you happen to see it, it's not your fault because the company was supposed to remove it. This is also why the report button exists on every platform. Now, I don't think I need to tell you that this is primarily being used to criminalize Arabs inside the country, not the white European Ashkenazi types. Although some of them actually do get arrested and charged, they just happen to be the anti-war people. So you can kind of see how this is set up and only used to criminalize Arabs and anyone who opposes Israel's ongoing genocide of Palestine. But this is not unique. This is certainly not the only example. Remember Ahmed Tamimi? In 2017, she became famous for slapping an IDF soldier who shot her cousin in the head. After being released from prison, she became a kind of celebrity in the Palestinian resistance world. 
this time accused of inciting terrorism on her Instagram account. Her mother maintains that her account was hacked, which happens quite frequently. She is accused of posting the following message. We are waiting for you in all the West Bank cities from Hebron to Jenin. We will slaughter you, and you will say what Hitler did to you was a joke. We will drink your blood and eat your skulls. Come on. We are waiting for you. This is very clearly a case of techno-framing. This isn't even written how she speaks. This isn't like anything that she has ever posted on her Instagram before. And this does come as she says she was hacked, as she frequently is. But that is not being taken into account at all. She's just all of a sudden been arrested for allegedly trying to incite terrorism and is being locked up. But this is far from the only example. On October 8th, a fourth year student at the Tech Eon in Haifa, Banya Khatib, was arrested for allegedly making a terrorist social media post. The post featured a skillet with a shakshuka simmering on the stovetop. The eggs almost set with the caption, we will soon be eating the victory shakashuka and a Palestinian flag emoji. Afterwards, a group of Jewish students filed a complaint against her. They claimed she was showing support for Hamas. She was then arrested and held overnight. The police attempted to extend her detention by six days. At court, she explained that she had made the image because she had successfully made the meal that she had been had difficulty preparing. She testified that the image was for a group of friends who were going to taste her triumph in the kitchen. The judge decided that there was probable cause that she was supporting terrorism, so she was ordered to spend another day in prison. On appeal, she was released, given five days of house arrest, banned from ever using social media again, and was suspended from school. But it continues. According to the New Yorker, Omar, not his real name, is a university student. Like many Arab young people, he maintains a Facebook account that consists largely of religious verses. A few days after the October 7th attack, he posted a verse about being patient during hard times. A stranger left a comment accusing Omar of supporting Hamas. Omar blocked the stranger. Then a screenshot of the post showed up on a student WhatsApp chat of Omar's department. Someone wrote, I'm not just locking him out of this group. I will make sure that he feels bad every time he comes near the university. Frightened, Omar filed a police report and then informed the university, sending a screenshot of his post to illustrate the absurdity of the incident. In response, the university sent him a letter informing him that he had been suspended pending a disciplinary hearing. An Israeli made a vague reference of a threat to Omar. So Omar was the one who got in trouble. I think it's pretty clear that these new Kisnet rules, the counter-terrorism laws, are being used to criminalize Arabs all across the not a real country. And in fact, it's not just them, but in fact, anyone who posts any kind of an anti-war view, anyone who opposes what Israel is doing to Palestine, even if they are an Israeli citizen, even if they are Ashkenazi Jewish, they do get arrested and charged with allegedly supporting terrorism. That's right. Merely not supporting killing people in Palestine, not even, not even really philosophically taking a side, but just saying the killing is wrong is enough to get you arrested and charged conspiring to aid and about terrorism. And as the illegitimate state of Israel continues, continues its downward spiral, continues its inhumane genocidal crusade against the Palestinians, the more people are going to begin challenging what they're doing. And that as a result, the Israeli government is going to have to resort to increasingly totalitarian, increasingly fascist measures in order to silence any dissent against their white supremacist settler colonial project. And how many people are going to get hurt because of this? 
people who aren't fighters, who aren't combatants, people who haven't shown any support for terrorism, just merely don't oppose the killing. Or people, in the case of a few of these Arabs who have done literally nothing at all, how many of them are going to get hurt? That question can only be answered by Israel itself and how many war crimes it's going to continue to commit. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.